Hotel star ratings aren't always reliable as the rating systems vary between countries. In Italy, for example, a hotel can be given 5 stars just for having a 24-hour reception desk. Receptionists that speak three languages instead of using stars look at ratings or reviews instead. Booking late can also get you the best deals. If your stay is not urgent, try booking a room on the day of the stay. If the hotel isn't full, you'll likely get a discount. Hotel managers reduce room rates last minute to fill them. It's usually better to book directly with the hotel. Third-party websites are often given worse rooms or whatever is left over. Hotels are also likely to offer a reduced rate if you book directly. This is because third-party sites charge a hotel fee. Once you're at the check-in desk, it's likely that the hotel staff already recognizes you. Many hotels, especially higher-end ones, will do a little research of their guests' social media. While this seems a bit creepy, it's only so that they can see who you are to make your stay more comfortable. If your key has a magnetic strip on it, make sure not to put it near your cell phone or wallet. A strong magnet like this one in your phone can erase your key card, meaning that you won't be able to get into your room. Now you're all checked in. Let's head up to your room. They're watching you when you're in the bedroom and when you're in the bathroom. No, I'm not talking about your three-year-old kids. Uh-uh. One of the last things you think about when going on vacation is if the room you're staying in has hidden cameras planted all over the place. For starters, look in the most obvious spots in your hotel room to see if you can find any hidden cameras. According to some experts, if you can't find anything in plain sight, then using your smartphone is enough for a basic sweep. Every camera has a lens and all lenses reflect light. So, a quick way to check for hidden cameras is to close all the curtains in the room and turn off the lights. Use your phone's flashlight to point it at potential places or objects a hidden camera might be at. One of the apparent spots is the smoke detector on the ceiling. Grab a chair and point the light straight at it and try to see if there is any red or blue light reflected. You'll have to do it slowly since the light needs to strike the lens at the correct angle for you to see a reflection. Even a painting in the room can be a potential nest for a hidden camera. Other objects can be lamps, a hole in the wall, or somewhere inside the closet. Another creepy place is the bathroom mirror. This one is a tricky spot, so you'll have to be patient when inspecting it. You can also use your phone camera to spot surveillance cameras that spy on you at night. These secret cameras emit infrared lights that the human eye can't see so that they can work at night. You'll also have to turn off the lights and put the camera in selfie mode. The rear-facing camera on most smartphones has an infrared filter, but the front one doesn't. You can try pointing a TV remote at the front-facing camera and press on any of the buttons to see it yourself. If you see a bright red light on your screen, that means it's working. All you have to do is move your camera in the dark to see if you can find a bright light around. It'll be good to do a second sweep to make sure you didn't miss anything. One of the best things you can do is download an app that shows you what devices are currently connected to the Wi-Fi you're using. It can show what smartphone, laptop, smart TV, and in the worst case, hidden cameras are connected. A radio frequency scanner can detect a wireless camera in the room, even if it's connected to its own Wi-Fi. It might be challenging though, because of many wireless devices overcrowding the airwaves. You can pick up random signals even if you turn off all your devices and any wireless emitting signals. Another technique you can use is turning off the Wi-Fi when you enter the hotel room. Most of the cameras are hooked up to the Wi-Fi, so they won't be functioning anymore. If you get a call from the reception saying that the Wi-Fi is down in the room, that might be a red flag. There's no reason for them to know if the Wi-Fi is purposely turned off. It could mean that the cameras are on the local Wi-Fi. When you connect to your hotel Wi-Fi for the first time, be careful about sharing your personal data. Now, how about the room in general? If you're not happy with it, you can easily request a change. If there are other available rooms, the manager will be happy to help. Once you're settled in, you'll want to head into the bathroom to check out all those samples. But while you might think you're being sneaky by grabbing the free shampoos, hotels actually want you to take them. The items contain the hotel's logo, so you're basically giving them free advertising if you put them in your home. The robes and towels are a different story though. Many hotels are now adding radio frequency chips so they can track stolen items. Toothpaste is one item you probably won't find in the hotel's bathroom. For budget hotels, it's often too expensive to order as it's classified as a medical supply. For luxury hotels, it's the opposite. 
they often can't find a toothpaste manufacturer that's fancy enough to be present in their rooms. You may also notice a seemingly random phone next to the toilet, but it's actually a requirement from the AAA for hotels to receive a four diamond rating. It does also act as a safety feature. If you slip on the wet floor or get stuck in the bathroom for some reason, you can easily call for help. Now, flying has long become routine for many people. But even frequent flyers sometimes don't know about things you should never do on a plane. Ooh. No bare feet on a plane. It's one of the biggest no-nos of air travel. Even if we omit the topic of unpleasant odors. Phew. The airplane floor is extremely filthy. People with contagious foot problems might have been walking the aisles barefoot before you. There's likely to be a lot of dirt left after previous passengers. And don't even get me started on the floor in the laboratories. Ew. If your feet need some freedom, take off your shoes, but at least wear your socks. Or bring along a pair of light slippers. Keep in mind that the pressurized air in the passenger cabin is just as dry as it is in the Sahara Desert, with only about 20% humidity. That's why your skin may feel discomfort after a flight. Mm. But wouldn't it make more sense to install several humidifiers that could add some moisture? But this extra load would cost airlines lots of money. Plus, the plane's airframe is mostly made of aluminum and other metals, and humid air could lead to corrosion. So, don't forget to bring a moisturizer and use it during the flight. Always secure your tray table as soon as the plane starts moving on the tarmac, and never lower it during the takeoff and landing. It's a security measure, which ensures that you and the other passengers will have a clear pathway in case of an emergency evacuation. Also, keep your seat in an upright position during takeoff and landing. First of all, a reclined seat can seriously slow down an emergency evacuation, since it will block a person sitting behind. What's more, the more backward you're leaning, the harder it is to get into the brace position during an emergency landing. Now, try to avoid snoozing during or right after takeoff and landing. For one thing, it's not the best thing for your health. The main problem is that the air pressure inside the cabin changes very quickly during these phases of the flight. This, in turn, affects the air pressure in your ears. It's important to be alert during this time to relax and open up your ears. For example, by yawning or swallowing frequency. Chewing gum works for me. If you're sleeping, you can't do this, which can lead to permanent damage. And, of course, there's a safety issue. Most accidents happen during takeoff and landing. If you're sleeping during these stages, you might not be alert and conscious enough if an emergency happens. Now, this next recommendation comes from the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. According to them, you might want to skip on hot drinks on a plane. The water used to make tea or coffee doesn't come from bottles. It's regular tap water. And water tanks on airplanes are often old and full of bacteria. In 2004, there was a study which found that more than 12% of water samples contained harmful bacteria. But if you still decide to have a cup of hot beverage on a plane, never pour coffee or tea on your own. Flight attendants are trained to handle this task in crowded aisles of a moving airplane and won't accidentally burn you or other passengers. Now, it's probably better if you don't order Coke on a plane. The cabin pressure so low up in the air causes a lot of foam. For apparent reasons, flight attendants don't want to serve you a cup filled with froth. That's why they'll fill only half the cup, then wait for the bubbles to settle, and then finish pouring. That can take ages. Keep your air vent open. This way, you'll minimize the spread of germs. Planes have high-quality air filters. They'll catch up to 99% of all airborne germs, so you should be safe there. But make sure to wipe that tray table. With 8 times more bacteria than the toilet flush button, it's the dirtiest place on board. Another thing you should avoid is leaning your head on the window if you have a window seat. You never know who occupied your seat before you, and in any case, the glass is likely to be covered with germs. Say no to backless sandals and high heels on a flight. I do. There are very serious safety reasons for such a request. The first is that both these types of footwear make it very difficult to evacuate the aircraft fast. If you wear high heels, you will anyway have to leave them behind in case the crew is using emergency slides during an evacuation. The heels are very likely to damage the slide, so off they go. Now ask yourself, 
Do you really fancy running away from the airplane barefoot? I'll answer that for you. Nope. Instead, wear sturdy shoes with a solid sole. In this case, you won't find yourself standing on the hot tarmac or in the weeds without any footwear at all. Don't stuff heavy objects into overhead compartments. Your things may not stay inside during severe turbulence. And while falling out, they will injure you and other passengers. Ow! That's why if it feels difficult to lift something into the overhead compartment, better put it under the seat in front of you or elsewhere. Now, don't blame the pilot for the hard landing. When you experience it in bad weather, it might be intentional. If the runway is covered with water or snow, the plane has to touch down hard in order to break the water layer and prevent aquaplaning. Otherwise, the water can perform the role of a lubricant, and the plane won't be able to break or respond to any control. Deploying an emergency slide when there's no emergency is a bad, very bad idea. It can cause hour-long delays and cost airlines thousands of dollars to pack the undamaged slide back into its container. Why would someone do it? Apparently, some think it'll help them get off the plane faster. Well, they're an idiot. Don't be one yourself. Just keep in mind that it doesn't work this way. Don't ignore the instructions of the cabin crew to open window shades during takeoff and landing. This way, flight attendants can see what's happening outside, assess the situation, and act fast, organizing the evacuation. Oh, you're dining in Paris with a full belly of French onion soup and a mouthful of double chocolate souffle. <laughs> okay, enough of that bad accent. The waiter approaches asking how your meal was, and mouth full, you give a satisfied expression and make the A-OK -okay gesture. You expect to see happiness on the waiter's face, but he looks at you with irritation. Well, it turns out that making a circle with your index finger and thumb does not mean OK in certain countries. In France, it means zero or worthless. Instead of praising the delicious food, you called it worthless. Oops. In Venezuela, Turkey, and Brazil, it's a hand gesture you shouldn't use either. In these countries, this is a sign that will offend pretty much anyone you flash it at. Enough said. Just give them your biggest smile and wait till you finish what's in your mouth to give your proper thanks. All over the world, giving a thumbs up is seen as a positive thing. It's an expression of your liking towards something that everything is good. In parts of Italy, West Africa, Iran, and Greece, though, it carries a stigma as an incredibly offensive gesture. When visiting Malaysia, you use this digit to point at things. So next time you're trying to hitchhike in these countries, you should reconsider sticking your thumb out for a ride. You might never get picked up. Trying to order two of anything, or showing someone the peace sign in the UK, Australia, or New Zealand is fine, as long as you don't have your hand the wrong way. Do this gesture wrong, and you're giving a very offensive hand signal, which isn't going to win you many friends. So, make sure that when you have your index and middle fingers pointed up in the V-shape, your palm is facing outwards, and you'll have a great time, mate! Bowing is used a lot in East Asian cultures to greet each other and guests. The deeper the bow is, the more respect you are being given. Fortunately, most Japanese don't expect foreigners to understand the bowing etiquette right away. They'll generally also accept a handshake or a nod. But being familiar and practicing your bowing etiquette before going to Japan will impress all the locals. How low can you go? Using your index fingers is considered impolite in several European, Latin American, and African nations. It's particularly rude in China, Japan, and Indonesia when pointing at a person. The gesture might be taken as you singling someone out to blame or insult them. If you ask for directions in the Philippines, you might be left scratching your head, wondering where they're pointing. Don't be alarmed. The locals use their lips instead of raising their hands. When in doubt, wherever you are in the world, just gesture toward a person or place using your entire hand. You might think that sticking your pinky finger out makes you look fancy. But in China, it's frowned upon. This gesture is the same as giving a thumbs down and meaning that something is making you unhappy. When taking photos with others, you want to be respectful and don't want to make any obscene hand gestures. Two gestures to avoid, in particular, are sticking up only your pinky finger and pointing at something with a dirty object, 
like a used fork or a chopstick. Now, it's fun to eat with chopsticks, but you might accidentally cause a fence if you put them down the wrong way. When you're in China, South Korea, or Japan, don't make the mistake of sticking your chopsticks upright in a bowl of rice. This is considered bad luck. Oops. If you have to put your chopsticks down, simply place them on the side or across the bowl instead. Likewise, when eating in South Korea or China, don't ask someone to pass you some food. In these countries, you have to join in the action and grab what food you desire. And you're not going to offend anyone if you take that last bite either. In some places, it's acceptable to blow your nose while at the dinner table. Not all of us are even prepared for the sudden trickle of the nose. But as long as you excuse yourself and turn away, everything is okay. Except if you're vacationing in Japan, China, or South Korea, where the chilies can make your nose runny very quickly. So never blow your nose in public. If you must clear your nostrils, consider leaving the table and blowing your nose in the restroom or hiding away from any other observers while being quiet. It's considered rude and unhygienic to the people around you. Always use a paper tissue, not a handkerchief, and throw it away after use. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.